Welcome to the Beyond Ordinary Women podcast. Every two weeks, we post podcast versions of one of our free training videos, or you can access our videos now at beyondordinarywomen.org. Enjoy the podcast. Hi, I'm Kay Dagon with Beyond Ordinary Women Ministries, and I'd like to welcome you to the second session in our series on dealing with loneliness in ministry. And our special guest is Carrie Steinbeck of Park City's Presbyterian Church here in Dallas, where she is the director of the women's ministry. In our first video podcast, we talked about identifying uh, various types of loneliness and the causes of those. And so in this particular session, we're going to talk about meeting God through it, meeting God in the midst of that loneliness. So Carrie, um, obviously, as Christians, we're always told that God will meet our needs. Mm -hmm. And we know that. But is there anyone in the Bible that models loneliness that we can see this in their lives? Oh, yes. I mean, in fact, it is all throughout God's Word. And we know that before sin entered the world, Adam and Eve and God enjoyed this great relationship and sin just blew that to pieces. Absolutely. There was just separation, there's misunderstanding and extreme loneliness. And it, it was fun, interesting for me to see how many people throughout God's Word really struggled with loneliness. And it seems like each one had a situation that was hard. Um, they tended to believe lies that weren't true in the midst of that loneliness about God, about their situation. And then God met him there and showed him that he can be trusted in that lonely place. And so I thought we might talk about some of those characters. Sure. Who, are, who are some of your favorites? Who, who's, who is your very favorite one well, that you study? You know, I, I, Elijah is the one that comes to mind first. And when he has just experienced that major watershed, clearly, of the rain coming down, and um, for after he prayed and prayed for the drought to end, and God brought the rain, and he was running, though, from Jezebel for his very life. And exhausted and drained, he, he falls apart. He's just wiped, and he's, not only is he depressed, but he's lonely. And the lie he be believes is that he's the only one left. Right. You know, there's nobody else that believes that's following God. And quickly, God meets him and encourages him and says, okay, you're not the only one. In fact, there's 7,000 that are left. And he feeds him, and he meets him, and he says, come on. Let's go. I want you to keep doing more. And I think that's how God uniquely met him. And not only is his physical need, but what was true. He wasn't all alone, as he thought. So that happens a lot. And um, another one of the characters in the Bible I loved looking at is Hagar. You know, she was the first, and a woman, to give God a name, the God who sees me. Um, she, as you know, her story is that Sarah had given her permission to have a baby with her husband, Abraham and uh, to try to cure their infertility and when she did get pregnant she just Sarah basically was emotionally abusive to her and um, everything seemed to go wrong so she ran out in the desert and she was all by herself and God met her there and said I see you and I know you and I love you and I think that's how God meets us in our loneliness in most unusual ways it feels like a desert that everything's been gone wrong and he meets us there and says I know you I see you in fact, I know you better than you know yourself. He deals with me and my loneliness like that, and I know everybody. Well, in fact, I went through a really lonely period. This was years ago mm. when I was um, basically slandered by some people uh, in my church. I wasn't on church staff at that mm -hmm, point, but mm -hmm. I was in a church volunteering, mm -hmm. and the Hagar story was what I really clung to, that yeah. he is the God who sees me. Right that he sees what's happened, mm -hmm. that it wasn't a surprise to him, mm -hmm. that he knows everything that these people said, he knows mm -hmm. what my heart is, which mm -hmm. isn't what they suggested. Mm -hmm. And it was just very, very um, helpful to me to have yeah. that story in the Bible. Yes, yes, I love that too. And Moses, when he came down from meeting with God on Mount Sinai, and there was such total chaos and rebellion. He goes, what has happened? Mm -hmm. And there's extreme, you know, I'm a leader, I'm supposed to be leading these people, and they're not only turning against God, but against me. And my own brother has yes. 
yes. participate. And thinks it's yeah. not that bad. Yeah. You know, just how awful to be in that kind of a ministry failure mm -hmm. and to feel that alone and have to do some hard things. That's doing hard things as a leader when there's been lots of disobedience is really lonely. Right. I think that's a big, big point. Moses is a great example. It is. He really is. And then when we get to the New Testament, I love um, Peter and that he failed miserably and three times betraying Jesus, who he has said he would never do that, three times by the time the cock crowed, but Jesus met him in his resurrected state and three times, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Just that beautiful reinstatement by his love, even in the midst of failure, because Peter felt like a failure, therefore so lonely. Why should I even be in ministry again? And Jesus so met him in that, understood and restored him. Um, and then I had never seen this before. Paul, um, in 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 First Timothy, he is in actually literally in a pit in prison, and he feels like all of his companions in ministry have left. And he asked Timothy, "Please go get my scrolls and the papyrus, and don't forget it because they will give me great comfort." And I love what he's saying is. People have left me, but I know God's word will comfort me. And that's always how God works, too. It's not just people. He uses his word to, go, to convey to us that he understands, and he knows our hearts. That's so powerful. Amen. But there's none, none that showed us what it was like to deal with loneliness like Jesus. I mean, he, he was with lonely people in his ministry. He met the woman at the well who felt like a complete empty failure in her relationships. He dealt with people who had leprosy and scars and wounds. He was among the lonely. He took time away to go and experience solitude with God his Father, to renew his soul, to be in prayer with him about the things he was doing. We know if Jesus had to take time for solitude, how much more we need it to fill our lonely places. And then last, when he was on the cross, and he was crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When he took on the greatest amount of sin, every bit of wrath that was deserved for us on himself, the separation was had to be excruciating, but he took it so we wouldn't have to be separated. And now we know that loneliness is best filled by the presence of Jesus within. What a gift. It is. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for those insights into those mm -hmm. stories, Carrie. I think that's really encouraging to mm -hmm. those of us mm -hmm. who deal with loneliness, mm -hmm. even if it's just a periodic loneliness, mm -hmm. even if something has just happened mm -hmm. that we need some encouragement. Mm -hmm. All of those stories are very encouraging, and so many of them really deal with being alone, and God then can speak to you. Yes. You know, exactly. That, exactly. that being alone, he can speak through his word, he can mm -hmm. speak through his spirit, and certainly he can use other people, mm -hmm. but he may not. And so we have to put ourselves in situations where we're listening, don't we? Yes, exactly. Exactly. If, if Jesus had to take time for solitude, then we do too. And I love what Elizabeth Elliot said, is that we take our loneliness to God in solitude and in solitude to prayer, and we let that transform us with God. That's great. Mm -hmm. I think that leads to our final episode that we're going to talk about, really, um, lessons that are learned and how mm -hmm. you grow as a leader because of the loneliness that you mm -hmm. go through. So thank you, Carrie, for this one, and we look forward to the next episode. We hope you'll join us. Thanks for listening to the Beyond Ordinary Women podcast. You can find more podcasts and information about women in leadership by going to beyondordinarywomen.org. This podcast was produced by Beyond Ordinary Women Ministries. Our production team includes Evelyn Babcock, Kay Daigle, Kay Halligan, Deborah Herring, Sharifa Stevens, and John Sparks. Theme music, Back in Stride by Don Miller, used by courtesy of Christine Miller.